English bureaucracy can be ridiculous. And so now I've been forced to, uh, to leave. They handed over the documents. They handed me that or any of that. Roll intro. <laughs> Les poules. Vous avez faim? D'accord. Bon appétit. Good morning. We're the southwest of France, the northernmost tip. Still the southwest. Oh, it's a lovely day today. It's getting a bit. Uh, it's getting a bit cooler in the mornings now. Pas trop chaud. Uh, I don't think the French have a word for warm. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, loads of comments from yesterday's video. Uh, welcoming Chris and Katie from America. Load of comments about me slowing down, trying my best. Um, and a load of comments giving me advice on, on French. Yes, yeah, so my plan is to, well, I've got a lesson next uh, Monday. I'm also looking for Top Gun, which I know by heart in English. Looking for that in French. See whether I can uh, pick up pick up the language there too. Anyway, this is going to be a very short intro. Loads to do. So, um, Lisa and I, we need to drop the kids off, the children off, for 10 to 9. Then we need to go to Angoulême. Did I pronounce that right? Angoulême. Apparently I need to have more Emphasis on the goût, Angoulême, and Confolon. I think I got that right. Um, so, sorry, I've gone off on a tangent. But you know, so there's a, a window, pas le, le fenêtre, uh, but a window of time um, between 8.30 and 10 for me to collect my carte de séjour. So I've paid for the uh, electronic stamp, I've got my passport, I've got my um, the receipt, there's something else that I need to take as well, but I need to get to the prefecture in Angoulême between 8.30 and 10. Now, the kids don't get dropped off until 10 to 9, and it takes 40 minutes to get there, so hopefully it won't break some speed limits. Anyway, whatever next is, let's do that. Got my passport and everything else that I need, I think. Off to Angoulême. Too slow, C'est parti. So back from Angoulême. Um, so we got there for quarter to ten. There was diversion, diversions. I told you I couldn't speak English. Diversions everywhere. And uh, yeah, so we got there at quarter two. Uh, but they still saw us. They handed over the documents. They handed me that. That's my card de séjour. Titre de séjour. So I'm very very pleased about. So. Um, 
Yeah, and there was also a bit of a, a bit of a protest going on. I think it was something to do with uh, you know, please you let me know in the comments um, about the, the youth French justice system. I don't know. Um, if we managed to pick a few, a few words, use Google Translate, put it in the internet, and we found something to do with that. Do you know what? It was the most friendliest, politest protest in a government building I've ever seen. Yeah, Lisa, on the other hand, um, got a message back from, from the government in relation to a carte de séjour, saying that they want a birth certificate, which they've had twice. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to give you an example now of how English bureaucracy can be ridiculous. So those who have never watched or have not gone back, uh, I'm a former police officer. Uh, I was in the army for four years. I um, was in the police for 27 years, spent most of that time as a detective, uh, retired as a detective inspector on ill health and uh, due to post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but there was a charity in the UK called Police Care UK and they um, provided me with a volunteer uh, who supported me through the ill health retirement process, which can be extremely uh, bureaucratic and, uh, and difficult. So a little while back, way over a year ago, I contacted Police Care UK saying that I would like to volunteer um, for them as a, um, as a support volunteer for all the people going through the ill health retirement process. So I had to have an interview, I had to apply, uh, I had to go through a vetting process, I had to do loads of training, lots of training, um, which was all online. Uh, it was all classroom based. I had to do safeguarding training and it took up a lot of time, but it would have been well worth it. And uh, the cadre um, of volunteers supporting people going through the ill health retirement is very, very small. And there were a lot of people asking for help. So last week I was given all the passwords to go onto the Police Care UK um, systems so that I could be given my first um, ever person to support through the ill health retirement process um, only for it not to work and they made inquiries with the uh, with the IT department information technology department and they said um, because of the firewall anyone outside of the UK can't get access so there were appeals made to the CEO of Police K UK and there is nothing that they can do. So because I live in France, I can't access the systems because of a firewall. I did make mention that we have put a man on the moon. And so I'm pretty sure if we've got the technological capability to put a man on the moon, yeah, we should be able to uh, work around this. There isn't. And so now I've been forced to, uh, to leave Police K UK. Um, and there's nothing they can do. So, um, so yeah, yeah. It, it's just an absolute shame because it, it was something that I wanted to give back to. Um, and, and all for, yeah, for myself as well, really, apart from these videos, yeah, that give me a, uh, a purpose it makes me think especially the editing part gets my brain working i, ju I just wanted to help people uh, as people have helped me in the past but uh, it's not to be and it's a massive shame but uh, what they are going to do please kuk they're going to uh, contact their media relations department they're going to put a link to this channel onto the police kuk website and they're going to signpost people to the video that i did a, a good few months ago called uh, ptsd and me which is a, it's a tough watch. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it explains my journey uh, in part as to why we had to yeah, leave the UK. But anyway, so, but to leave on a high note, Jean-Luc, you run around the field like he's on high laps. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey. 
Stay. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Ready. I've not really filmed it, but um, we had a um, our bathroom renovated, and uh, we had to take down a few walls, and it's left some um, some bits of the ceiling that need doing. And uh, so a friend of ours, Lynn, uh, he's Spanish, and uh, he's Menorcan. There's a difference. Uh, he came over and did it for us today. So uh, I know what that's going to mean. Now that the ceiling's done, Lisa, Lisa is going to want to decorate it. We also have the, have the lovely Emma come round today and uh, we've now fully signed up for our top-up mutuelle. So, uh, you know, the healthcare system uh, in France, you know, you've got your carte vitale that will cover about 75% your of your medical bills uh, and then you either have to you foot up the remaining 25% or you get a top-up mutuelle. And uh, so I think we paid in total because there was a bit more of a discount for all four of us 133 euros a month um, so that's amazing so that's been done i'm off to take lisa um, to her first horse riding lesson today and uh, I'll, I'll film that and i'll put that out on the video for monday because this is getting a bit too long leaves one last thing left to say it's not from me Laters. <laughs> Your balance, balance. Yes. Your balance is based on your heels, so when you're going to go into it.